All right, so um, my name is Ming Nguyen and I am a graduate student from University of Minnesota. So this talk is a composite hex with a composite heavy composite axion. This is based on the paper with uh, Professor Tony Ogeda from also from University of Minnesota. All right, so. Um, all right, so this talk is about axion. So axion is currently one of the most wanted particle um, after the Higgs. So our goal in this paper is to, in, to uh, include heavy axion in composite Higgs model. So I don't think this has been done before. So typically, um, heavy axion requires uh, embedding the QCD in an enlarged color. So we are consider, we're gonna consider a minimal model in which we have uh, uh, the hypercolor dynamics uh, give rise to both the Higgs and uh, also breaking the enlarged color. So uh, I'm gonna review composite axion uh, first. So this is uh, first considered by Choi Kim a uh, long time ago, 1985. So in this um, original model, they introduced a neutron dynamics uh, called the axicolor, the so SUNA. So for the model, so the model to solve the strong CP, they include a uh, masses axi quark in the UV. So this includes a pair of a vector pair of um, bifundamental uh, axi quark and then another pair of axi quark that charge only under the uh, the axi color. Okay, so when the when the axi color confines. It's a global symmetry U4 left cross U4 right from this uh, multi quark and it's got broken to U4, U4V. So they give rise to 16 uh, Nambu Goldstone bosons and they are two singlet. These two singlet correspond to one of them is T15, uh, this one in the S, SU4, uh, T16. Um, so both of these um, are broken by. Uh, by instanton. So T15 and T16 are both broken by the QCD instanton, and the T16 is broken only by the uh, SU4, by the SUNA instanton. So it's like the ADA and the ADA prime, the QCD. Uh, the T16 is going to be heavy, and the T15 is going to be light, and T15 broken only by the QCD can play the role of axion. Okay, so how do you make an axion heavy? So typically, the mass of the axion. Uh, follows the standard formula, uh, MAFA square is determined by the QCD instanton, so it's proportional to lambda C. Um, so one way to increase the axial mass is by including some new dynamics, let's say uh, uh, some lambda D. So lambda D is a confinement scale of this new dynamics. So if lambda D is heavy, let's say TV scale, then it can have the MA and the decay constant FA both in TAV scale. However, this naive model doesn't work because um, typically when one introduces a neutron dynamics, it's gonna have uh, some topological uh, properties and typically gonna have a theta terms. So for example, if I write out the effective potential uh, for this from some SUN gas group, then uh, in this case, the axion gonna tend to align with the theta D, uh, with the theta term of the heavier scale. So which means that gonna align the theta D as a new uh, strong sector. So now you have a misalignment, so it failed to, strong, to solve the strong CP problem. So actually we have seen this in the Chucky model. The Chucky model have a new dynamic, the so axi color, but in the axi color model, um, it's, sort of, it's, it's, it's still shown solve the strong CP because uh, in this model there are two axions. One of them is heavy, so the ID corresponds to the T16, that's anomalous under the, um, the, the, the SUND or the axi color instanton, also uh, aligned to, 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 to cancel out theta D term bar. So, but in this case, uh, if we uh, equalize the masses, you see that the AD now get mass from the lambda D, so lambda D get mass of AD, and the A is gonna stay massless. Uh, in this case, uh, it's massive because we don't have the contribution from the quark, but otherwise it's going to be proportional to the quark masses. So in this case, the axial mass is still light. So to get around this and still give, still get a heavy axion, um, one of the ways that we pursue is by embedding the color SU3C uh, and the, the axial color into some enlarged color that broken at some scale under UV. 
so um, in this case, the SU3 come directly from the SUN plus three, and the SUN and SUN prime kind of form a diagonal group, uh, SUND. So in this case, um, the bifundamental um, factor pair, the size C prime, the C prime bar we had before, uh, now had to be embedded in the SUN plus three. So there's two minimal way to do this. Um, so it had to be either real or pseudo real. So it can come from um, the minimal way is um, uh, embed them in some XI in the anti-symmetric AN for the SUN model, or it could be the adjoint uh, representations. So in the adjoint is always real, but for the anti-symmetric, uh, it's real for, uh, I think it's real for um, even n and is uh, pseudo real for odd n. Okay, so in this case, um, the procedure is the same. So we find out that are still going to be two axion. Uh, it turns out that now the effective potential in the radar is going to be different. That's going to be a new contribution coming from the enlarged color breaking, color breaking. So the first two terms are the same, except for lambda d. So now the lambda d coming from the SUND instanton. Um, now I'm not going to run from um, cycle zero is the time to one over lambda d, but it's still going to be cut off at one over lambda uv because this is, case, this is the scale where the SUND emerge. So instead, the eastern time at higher scale only couple to, to ID. So this new contribution is, uh, we call this a small eastern time contribution. Uh, this is lambda i. So this only takes into account the SUN prime is in turn with size smaller than one over lambda uv. So depending on the coupling, say of the Yukawa coupling of the quark in the SUM prime, uh, lambda i could be large. And uh, if lambda i is greater than lambda c, then we have a new source of mass uh, in the effective potential, and the actually are gonna now receive mass from lambda i, and it could be a TV scale even. So one drawback of this light model is the enlarged color had to be broke, had to be broken by a scalar. So even though we have um, a composite axial model, we still had to introduce a scalar to break the enlarged color. Okay, so now we're gonna attempt to incorporate um, heavy composite axon into a composite Higgs framework. So there are a lot of ways to do this, and uh, depending on whether the axis quark um, are charged. Uh, not charged under the hypercolor. So I think there have been many attempts before uh, to have the composite axon into a composite model. So typically, the axi, um, the hyperfermion are also charged under the CP, uh, so under the, the PQ symmetry. Uh, but in this case, we're going to consider a, a minimal model. So we're going to attempt to break the unified color just through some hyperfermion condensate. And we're gonna consider the case when the axis quark are totally separated. So they don't have any hypercolor charges. So how do you realize this? How do you break this uh, unified color? Um, well, so in composite, in composite Higgs model, there's gonna be some color state. So let's say the psi here is a, a constituent that give rise to the Higgs. So the psi psi bound state give rise to the Higgs. Uh, and Typically, the composite Higgs model, composite Higgs model um, require to get a master top partner. This is usually realized through the partial compositeness mechanism. So one needs to introduce some hyperfermion, some color hyperfermion. Uh, in this case, chi. So chi here is a fundamental under the QCD. So the psi chi psi um, with the appropriate assignment, um, they can uh, for bow state. And assuming the large anomalous dimensions, they can play the role of a top partner. So when the color is enlarged, um, chi also had to be enlarged into the SUM plus three. So into some psi chi in this case. So it turns out that the psi chi bound state can actually break, can actually break the enlarged color through some four fermion interaction. So here is an example of the model that we consider. So in this case, um, the gas group, so hyperfermion, the hypercolor is a SU4, and we have a SU5 global symmetry for the psi, and then a U2M plus three cross U2M plus three symmetry for the psi chi. So we write down the four, um, we write down an NJL model, we write down a four fermion interaction model 
for this uh, for this uh, top partner for this pi, and then it turns out that uh, the symmetrical breaking pattern going to be dependent on this four fourier bond coupling. So in this case, uh, the zeta r and zeta r prime correspond to the coupling kappa r and kappa r prime. And that kind of control the kind of uh, couple uh, the same family. So chi and chi bar both just under SUM plus three, and the kappa delta and kappa delta tilde um, actually couple the particle from the SUM plus three to SUM prime. So if the zeta kappa, zeta delta, and zeta delta tilde, which means the cross coupling is strong, then it turns out that the symmetry can be broken to the SUM cross SU3. All right, so this is a cartoon uh, picture of how the model work. Uh, so it's a home picture of the model. So we have a global symmetry. Uh, if you pick a SU4, um, hyper color, then have a SU5 uh, global symmetry. So this uh, core set give rise to the Higgs doublet. And then the same hyper color uh, dynamics also break the, the enlarged uh, strong sector. Give rise to the SU3. This is identified with the QCD, and now the SUN now can be identified with the axi color. So here we write down the, the normal constituent for the uh, for the axi quark, but we embed uh, if we embed the, the size C into the SUN plus three, then one of this axion, one of this thing that could be heavy. Okay, so actually, so this new embed can actually constrain the choice of hypercolor uh, from the assumption. So the hypercolor had to be asymptotically free and also the SU plus three and also the uh, enlarged color. So uh, in the figure here is uh, the two choices. On the left side is uh, we consider the, um, the SP um, hyperfermion and on the right side the SU4. So on the left side, uh, the rep representation of the psi is fundamental and the chi is uh, anti-symmetric, the trace list anti-symmetric, and on the right side is, uh, is vice versa. So it turns out that uh, this kind of model favor a smaller size, a smaller representation for the chi. Just not surprisingly, because we enlarge the, the chi uh, into bigger, it's gonna be dependent on the number n. So, uh, that's why we favor a smaller representation for chi. Okay, so um, with this, um, this is some value for the masses for the axion uh, in a few cases. So if we have the SU4 cases, um, so the lambda SC um, and the lambda D are going to be uh, determined from each other. So if you know lambda D, we know the coupling alpha primes, and that's going to determine lambda SC, or vice versa. So one can theoretically um, have a particle content as a lambda SC and then run everything down and get on the scale. So the lambda SC of the hypercolor, the confinement scale of the hypercolor can range from, in this case, 10 to 10 to 10 to 16. And the lambda D, the confinement scale of the axi color can range from 10 TeV to like a few thousand TeV. In either cases, um, one of the axion going to be heavy. And then the other axion mass now going to be controlled by the lambda I. So that in turn gonna be dependent on the coupling of the quark in the SUM prime. So in this case, um, this is come from the Y prime here. This is a coupling, uh, Yukawa coupling uh, for the particle under SUM prime. So uh, the MA mass is highly dependent on this coupling. In other cases, you can have the axial masses in TeV scale. So this is perfect for collider experiment. Okay, so uh, let me conclude my talk. So in our model, um, we successfully incorporate a heavy axion into a composite hex model. Um, so there's no scalar in the model because uh, everything on the global symmetry as well as the gauge symmetry is broken by hyperfermion condensate. Um, so this gonna bring some constraint on the hypercolor, um, but this is a minimal model. So in the future, um, you can make the model more efficient uh, by having by having the um, axi quark uh, that can be charged under the the, the hyper color, so there's still plenty of room for improvement. It's only a uh, a minimal model. 
So this kind of model gonna give a, a, a host of a, a interesting signal. So the IC quark, because had to be, the IC quark had to be embedded into some hyper representation in the UV, the SU M plus three. So it's gonna give out some bow state and those bow state can also be, called, uh, it's gonna be also a TV scale. Um, also the dark sector gonna give some interesting signal and they also may play the role of uh, dark matter. Okay, so that concludes my talk. Uh, thank you.